find you guilty and you will be convicted. <laughs> Only you can write your future. Courage to be different. Only you can write your future. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. Mr. Kumar, please join me on stage. And we shall move to the next stage. We shall move to the next stage. You can see the list of the common laboratory reagents and chemicals. Practical biology has to do with chemicals and reagents. And the chemicals or the reagents we use in the lab enable us to do analysis and get a good results that will enable us to come to a reasonable conclusion during experiments. So I would like to show you some of the chemicals that we use in biology lab and what they are used for. And as we start carrying out the experiments stage by stage, we will begin to know how to use these chemicals and you begin to put them in practice. These chemicals are dangerous, so when we are dealing with them, we handle them with care. As you can see, number one there is lime water. We have it in a bottle here. We have some of them in the shelf here. So the lime water is a chemical we use to test for the presence of carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide. During experiments on respiration, carbon dioxide is usually released. And this carbon dioxide can be detected using lime water. Because when the carbon dioxide passes through the lime water, it turns milky. And the milky color is an indication of the presence of the carbon dioxide. So, lime water is very important. We also use lime water in soil experiments. Now, this, this is iodine. We use iodine to test for the presence of a starch. When iodine is applied to a, a food substance that contains starch, it turns blue-black. The blue-black correlation is an indication of a positive iodine test. We also use iodine as a stain. We use it to stain, with the color, some biological specimens during microscopy. 
this is failing solution A. And we also have failing solution B. We have failing solution A and we have failing solution B. These two solutions are used to confirm the presence of a simple reducing sugar, such as glucose during food tests. The failing solution A and B, both of them are similar, except in the concentration of the chemicals we, we use in, in prepare, preparing them. The quantity of the ingredients we use in preparing them differ. But both of them contain copper, copper compound, copper 2 ion, and which gives it the bluish color. So when we use them to test for the presence of glucose, they always uh, indicate brick red color outside. So we use this solution to test the presence of producing sugar. Millions reagents is used to test for protein. It's also another chemical we use to test for protein. We call this one millions reagent. This is copper 2 tetraososophasis. Copper 2 tetraososophasis. We use this copper 2 tetraososophasis for demonstration of a diffusion. We can also use a potassium permanganate in place of it to demonstrate diffusion in liquids. We have aerosin solution. Aerosin solution is also used as a stain. You can see it is reddish. As I said earlier, this is potassium permanganate solution. You can see the crystals. Please look up. This is the potassium permanganate. You can see it. You can see the the pellets. So once you dissolve it in water, it turns violet. You can see it. These chemicals are very, very dangerous. That is why we have to wear hand gloves while handling them. We use it to demonstrate experiment on diffusion. This is a recent solution which we use to stain some biological specimens. Especially when you want to know or find out which tissue in a plant conducts water. Who amongst you here will tell me the tissue in a plant that conducts water? Up the stem. Xylem. If you don't use up the hand, I answer it very well. Yes? Xylem. Yes, the xylem tissue. You will use the OSIN solution to stem. You dip, allow the plant to grow and absorb this aerosin solution. So as it grows, the color will be drawn along the xylem tissue and it stains it. Please stay quiet. This is Sudan 3 solution, which is used to test for the presence of what? Lipids, fast and what? Oil. So as we carry out food test today, you go to see how to use what? Sudan 3 solution. This is copper 2 sulfate solution. Copper 2 tetraosophasis what solution is bluish in color. You can see the blue color. Then we also have sodium hydroxide. We use sodium hydroxide when testing for the presence of a protein in burette tests. In burette what? Tests. So we use it to test for the presence of protein. As we use them, we will see how they are very very important then we also have benedict solution benedict solution which is also used for confirmation of the presence of a simple reducing sugar so we use it to test for sugar glucose then we have hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid hcl this hydrochloric acid 
is also used during food tests, especially when testing for non-reducing sugar. It is a hydrolyzing agent. When you put it in a food substance that contains a non-reducing sugar, it's going to hydrolyze the reducing sugar to reducing sugar before you can apply other reagents to produce a positive uh, results. So we normally use hydrochloric acid. We have aqueous ammonia, which we will also use when testing for the presence of a uh, protein in the food sample. So there are other chemical reagents that we normally use in biology lab, but these are just uh, typical examples. There are other ones that we shall make use of in the process of uh, our experiments as we go ahead. We shall show you other ones and how we make use of them. Yes, having explained some of the equipment and the tools we use in biology lab, having introduced them, and having also introduced some of the chemicals and reagents we use in routine laboratory processes. Now, we shall talk about microscope because it is one of the most important tools we use in biology lab. I will explain microscope, its parts and uses because we are going to make use of them subsequently to examine some of the biological specimens that we cannot see with our naked eyes. Some of these biological specimens that we cannot see with our naked eyes include unicellular organisms like amoeba, paramecium, euglena, the yeast cell, plant cell and animal cells, we cannot see them with our naked eyes. So we are going to demonstrate how to use microscope to see them. You may be asked, what is microscope? Microscope is an instrument used to see very tiny objects or specimens that cannot be seen with the naked eyes. It has the ability to increase or magnify the size of the tiny specimens so that it can be seen and studied very well. So having known the meaning of microscope, we shall look at the various types of microscope, the parts and the uses. We have two major types of microscope. Number one Number one type of microscope is the light microscope. We also have electron microscope. Electron microscope. The light microscope is the one that makes use of either electric light or the sunlight. That is why it is called the light microscope. It makes use of the electricity which supplies light. We also have the one that has mirror. You can see mirror here. 
this mirror you see here is for the reflection of light. And the light is used to reveal some of the features of the specimen that will be placed on the stage. So we call it light microscope because it makes use of light as a source of illumination. The electron microscope is the one that makes use of a beam of electron as a source of illumination. And the image of the object is enlarged and magnified more than 200,000 times and is always projected on the screen where it can be observed. So the electron microscope is used in advanced laboratory setup and the research institutes. But this simple microscope is the one that is within the reach of ordinary students in secondary school level. So that is why I want you to know about the light microscope so that you can be using it for your laboratory procedures. So the light microscope has two types again. We have simple light microscope and we have compound light microscope. Simple light microscope and the compound light microscope. Both of them make use of sunlight, which can be reflected by this mirror. The simple light microscope is the one that has single lens. Single lens. And the lens magnifies the size of the object up to 1,000 times. Then the compound light microscope is the one that has double lenses. Double lenses. This is the eyepiece lens. This is the objective lens. So when a microscope has both the eyepiece lens and the objective lens, it's known as a compound microscope. A combination of these lenses is going to produce higher magnification of the object. But when a microscope has only one lens, maybe only the eyepiece, and does not possess the objective lenses, it's regarded as a simple microscope. Then, compound microscope has two major types. We have binocular compound microscope. When it has two eyepieces, there are some compound microscopes that have two eyepieces so that you can place the two eyes wide view two eyepieces, so we call it binocular, by means two, binocular compound microscope. Then we have monocular, monocular compound microscope. Like this one I'm holding now is a monocular compound microscope because has only one eyepiece. Then the electron microscope, as I said earlier, makes use of beam of electron as a source of illumination and produces larger magnification. It can magnify an object up to 200,000 times, while this simple microscope can only really magnify up to 1,000 times. So having learned the types of microscope, now let's talk about the parts of microscope. A typical microscope as I'm holding it here, the typical light microscope has the following parts. One, the supporting systems. 
It has a supporting system. It has the magnification system. It also has the illumination system. The illumination system. Adjustment. The adjustment system. Please, students, look very closely. You will see that the supporting system of a microscope includes the arm. This place I'm holding now is called the what? The arm. Or the limb. Is a support. You have to carry the microscope on the arm as I'm holding it now. You will also see the base. Base is also the supporting system of a microscope. You have the arm or what is called the limb. We have the base of the microscope or the what? Foot. Here is the base of the microscope, which you keep on the bench for support. Or you can call it the foot. This place I'm holding in my hand is the arm or the limb. Then we also have the revolving nose piece. Here is called the revolving nose piece. It's also a supporting system. We call it revolving nose piece. It is where the objective lenses are connected and you can use it to swing each objective lens into position. The revolving nose piece. We have the arm, we have the base. We call this the supporting systems of the microscope. The body tube and the draw tube, they are the supporting systems of the microscope. Then we have the magnification system. The magnification system of the microscope consists of the lenses, the eyepiece lens and the objective lenses. These lenses are capable of increasing the size of the objects when you view it. This eyepiece lens has its magnification written on this body. This is times 10 eyepiece and this one is times 40, times 10, times 60, times 100. When you multiply the eyepiece magnification with that of the objective lens, it gives you the total magnification. So the lenses constitute the magnification system of a microscope. The illumination system consists of the source of light, like the micros the, the mirror, the mirror here, yeah. the condenser, the iris diaphragm, they are at the back under the stage, the regular amount of light that passes through the hole. There is a small hole here called the stage hole. And through the stage hole, the light passes to the specimen. So the light, the mirror is used to reflect light towards this stage hole. While the condenser, the iris diaphragm, one of them, the great amount of light that passes into the specimen. Then, the adjustment system consists of the adjustment knobs, these knobs, these knobs that you are seeing here. This one is called the coarse adjustment knob, which is used to bring the object you are viewing into initial focus.